Yo guys, welcome to our video today also. My name is uh, Vincent on the channel Sita Talks on our YouTube channel. Can you have not subscribed, subscribe to us. Set your behaviors, practices and attitudes very widely throughout the world. And I know uh, my my <clears throat> my listener and uh, those watching us. You also have your take on uh, sexual behaviors in the, in uh, in your community, also in aspects, especially in Africa communities uh, communities factors such as religion, cultural norms, education, and socioeconomic conditions uh, affect the behavior and attitudes towards sex, especially in Africa uh, discussing. Uh, sexual matters is considered to be very sensitive and culturally it can be not be very comfortable to be discussed especially you find like a parent discussing the same with the, the child and also the adults discussing with the young ones this is one of the sex is one of the most ignored topic to be discussed in the family setting and also most most widely in africa but it has detrimental effects in uh, African population, especially the young population, when we talk matters uh, early pregnancy, when we talk matters uh, uh, sexual transmitted diseases, that is the STD, and also unplanned marriages and also unplanned uh, pregnancies. So it varies, especially uh, because we have different religions here in Africa. We also have uh, uh, the, the culture, the, the people practice different cultures, also depending on the education and also socioeconomic condition, they influence the sexual behavior and attitudes uh, towards uh, sex. So discussing matters sensitive, uh, such as sex, can be very difficult, especially here in Africa. And most of the time, they cannot be discussed openly. They are discussed uh, secretly. And uh, all comes with some other effects which affect how people live and also get to, to, to know each other and also get to, to influence their behavior. So to gain more accurate understanding of sexual behaviors and attitudes in, uh, in specific, in African countries or regions, it is essential to refer to research studies conducted by reputable organizations so that we get uh, the proper, where we have the proper response, especially with the organizations, government agencies, health institutions uh, that focus on sexual health and uh, behavior because that's a very important aspect in, uh, in a wider population. These uh, studies typically provide more localized and contextual uh, specific insights which affect and also give, get to get the true picture of really what is happening in, in the community. However, it is crucial to approach the such information with cultural sensitivity and avoid generalization about the entire population. So the topic of this uh, uh, video is uh, uh, how long does sex last on average? So when we talk about uh, average, uh, how long does sex last uh, according to the studies? The duration, the, the duration or the timing of uh, sexual intercourse can vary widely among individuals and uh, it depends uh, on several factors. And these factors uh, include preference, they include physical health, age, experience, and level of work are also. There is no fixed or average duration for sex that applies to everyone. Uh, like I've said, uh, based on research and other things, uh, this, uh, how long uh, does sex last on average? It depends on uh, individual, uh, studies and also considering the health of a person, the age, the experience, and the level of uh, arousal for the partners involved in this. In this. So uh, 
uh, some studies have been conducted to understand uh, general trends, but they are not uh, conclusively judging on something, on coming out with a specific uh, duration. So based on my research, I'm going to give you some numbers on how long uh, uh, sex should last, but it's not cast on a stone. You, you also give, you can give us, especially in my comments and also where we get to, uh, we can get to learn from each other. So research uh, conducted on uh, heterosexual uh, couples, uh, heterosexual couples, we mean a male and a female, because we know uh, we in other parts of the world, we have uh, male, male kind of marriages which uh, here in Africa, most of the, uh, the countries disapprove it, but uh, in other countries it is uh, embraced there and it is being practiced and we can't ignore that. But this kind of research which was done on female, male, female uh, kind of interaction found that the average duration of penetrative sex from the beginning, uh, that is uh, by penetrative sex we mean from the beginning of penetration to the ejaculation, uh, is around uh, five to seven minutes. So it is important to know that this is an average. So there are those who went up to 15 minutes, there are those who did it within three minutes, but averagely uh, it came out that uh, from the time of penetration to the time of uh, ejaculation, and this one does not involve the arousal time or to where one gets to prepare for it. So, uh, there was that period which was given average of five to seven minutes. So there are those, uh, like I've said, who had uh, an experience that can be was much shorter or longer, up to 15 minutes, or up to 30 minutes. But averagely, we found it to be within five uh, to seven minutes. So it is essential to remember that sexual satisfaction is not solely determined by duration of intercourse. So essentially, remember that the sexual satisfaction is not solely determined by the duration of sexual intercourse. Emotional connection, communication, and overall intimacy play significant roles in sexual experience. That is, uh, the partners get to be emotionally connected. Uh, communication, that is the way the, these partners get to communicate with each, each other. And overall intimacy, they have, uh, they, they, all in all, they bring about the experience, uh, whether a good experience or a bad experience, or the satisfaction at the end of the day of this kind of uh, uh, sexual experience. So couples should focus on open communication and understanding each other's uh, needs and desires, rather than solely focusing on the duration of sex. Yes, duration is important, but um, open communication and understanding each other's needs and decide that rather than solely focusing on the duration of sex. So communication is very important when we, we come to the how long this uh, sexual experience should last. And uh, uh, so you should, uh, the, the partner should understand each other over the same so that to get the best results for uh, which fits each other. Or if you or someone you know is concerned about sexual performance or satisfaction, it is best to consult the healthcare professional or a qualified sex therapist who can provide personalized advice and also uh, guidance, especially in the hospital setting. That's where you can get uh, uh, the best advice if you feel it, you are challenged with the timing over the same. It's very important to come to the hospital so that you get uh, to share with your doctor or a family doctor, the sexual ther therapist, to guide you accordingly. Because some of these things may be psychological, may be medical, and also maybe some health changes which can be approached and the one gets to be get that uh, uh, satisfaction. How long is not a big issue, but how and also that kind of communication I mentioned about is very important that you get to consider it. We, there's what we call inter, inter, intravaginal ejaculation latency time. Intravaginal ejaculatory latency time. It is called IELT, intravaginal ejaculation latency time. Uh, this uh, refers to the time taken from the start of vaginal uh, penetration 
to ejaculation uh, in males. So I I L I E L T intravaginal ejaculation that is time is very important and it is more scientific where it is it is calculated from the time of penetration up to the time the ejaculation comes about and this is normally done on men. So uh, it is a measure used in research and a clinical setting to assess premature ejaculation. By premature ejaculation, I think I shared a video over the same. Kind of if you have not watched the video, check on my videos, previous videos. I shared about uh, premature ejaculation and what it means. So uh, basically, premature ejaculation means that where a man ejaculates uh, sooner. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, Sorry. So where a man gets to ejaculate before uh, the other partners, uh, sooner as not as expected from the with the other partner. So uh, well, or where where it's not fitting to the other partner, yeah, that's premature ejaculation within a very short time. Whether the man has released the the spans and also before the other one gets also gets also and gets to get the best experience. IELT can vary significantly among individuals and there is no no universal acceptable like I've said there's no universal acceptable way of this IELT that is intravaginal ejaculated latest time but then we have on the normal or average uh, uh, based on the research and uh, it is IELT range from three minutes, that's uh, from yeah, uh, three three minutes to seven minutes on average, with most men ejaculating within this time from during the vaginal uh, sexual uh, intercourse. So it is essential to keep in mind that IELT is just one aspect of sexual performance. Like I've said, with the things also you consider like age, health of the patient, the level of uh, arousal and, uh, and other things. So premature ejaculation can be distressing for some individuals or couples. And uh, if it is, becomes a, a concern, seeking advice from a healthcare provider or professional is the best uh, advice which can be, be done. And uh, this uh, premature ejaculation can be also be approached by the sex therapists. Uh, which who can provide guidance and uh, suggest the appropriate treatments or technique addressing any issue related to the sexual uh, performance. Sexual behaviors, practices, and attitudes vary widely across all the world. In the communities, especially I can talk of Africa because that's where I am doing the videos from. So uh, factors such as religion, cultural norms, educational level, socioeconomic condition can influence the sexual behavior and, uh, uh, and attitudes towards sex. Moreover, discussing sexual matters can be sensitive and culturally sensitive in many societies. So conversation about sex are considered uh, private and not openly discussed. Therefore, data and information on sexual behavior especially here in Africa, can be limited or not uh, readily available. To gain more accurate understanding of the sexual behaviors, it is always good to refer to research studies conducted by reputable organizations, government agencies, or health institutions that focus on sexual health and uh, behavior. These uh, studies typically focus on uh, uh, localized and contextual kind of specific insights. But uh, it's very important that uh, it is crucial to approach such information and uh, cultural sensitivity to avoid generalization about the entire uh, community or people uh, where the study is, uh, is done. Guys, uh, that's the information I have for you. I want to welcome you to our next video. Thank you very much, guys.